Hey there, Swarmers! Welcome back to The Hive. Today we're talking about some terms that often cause more than a bit of confusion and are sometimes used interchangeably incorrectly. Weather, climate, global warming, and climate change. Let's start with weather. Weather refers to atmospheric conditions that occur locally over short periods of time, from minutes to hours or days. Some familiar examples include rain, snow, clouds, winds, and thunderstorms. Climate, on the other hand, refers to the long-term averages of temperature, humidity, and rainfall patterns over seasons, years, or decades that have come to define our planet's local, regional, and global weather. So weather reflects short-term conditions of the atmosphere, while climate is the average daily weather for an extended period of time at a certain location. Weather can change from minute to minute, hour to hour, day to day, and season to season. Climate, on the other hand, is the average of weather over time and space. Now, global warming is the gradual increase in the Earth's temperature observed since the pre-industrial period between 1850 and 1900 due to human or anthropogenic activities. This warming is primarily caused by the burning of fossil fuels, which increases the heat-trapping greenhouse gas levels in the Earth's atmosphere. Climate change encompasses global warming, but also refers to the broader range of changes that are happening to our planet. These include rising sea levels, shrinking mountain glaciers, accelerating ice melt in Greenland, Antarctica, and the Arctic, and shifts in flower and plant blooming times. With these definitions in mind, let's talk about the record low temperatures the United States experienced at the beginning of February 2021, which seemed to contradict the whole idea of global warming and climate change. The recent severe cold in the United States was caused by something known as the polar vortex. The polar vortex is a large area of low pressure and cold air surrounding both of the Earth's poles. It always exists near the poles, but weakens in summer and strengthens in winter. The term vortex refers to the counterclockwise flow of air that helps keep the colder air near the poles, under normal conditions. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association has found that in today's warm climate, the Arctic is heating up twice as fast as the rest of the Earth. As the Earth warms, less snow cover and sea ice form, which changes the pressure and temperature gradients of regions of the polar vortex. During the winter, the polar vortex frequently becomes less stable and expands, sending cold Arctic air southward over the United States with the jet stream waves. This winter, because of the warmer air in the Arctic and the largely ice-free Arctic Sea, those waves were able to reach much farther south. This caused every single state in the U.S., including Hawaii, to reach below freezing temperatures at the beginning of February. From power outages and blackouts that left more than 4 million people in the dark and cold and without clean water supplies in parts of Texas, this extreme weather caught many unprepared. And while the United States experienced this Arctic disruption facilitated by global warming, so too did Europe and East Asia, with some countries experiencing their coldest weather in 25 years. But if it's colder and there's more snow and storms, then doesn't that mean, if anything, the climate is getting cooler? No, because remember, weather is short term. Even now, the cold has moved on. The longer term trend is that the planet is indeed warming. Over the last 140 years, the average global temperature has already risen by one degree Celsius. But two thirds of that warming has occurred since 1975. We've seen the 20 warmest years on record since 1981. And the warmest five years were between 2014 and 2018. And if no further increases to anthropogenic GHGs are made, our current trajectory sees us hitting 1.5 degrees Celsius of warming by about 2040. What difference could only 1.5 degrees Celsius make? Well, this 1.5 degrees is the global average across the whole surface of the entire planet. To actually achieve a change in the global average, we need to see an immense rise in heat. Very many places will experience local temperatures much, much higher than 1.5 degrees Celsius above average, dangerously hot. And in some places, this has already occurred. The frequency of extreme weather events in the United States, from wildfires last summer caused by record-setting lightning strikes, to extreme cold in areas that do not usually experience it, and all around the world, too, are an important reminder that if we do not act to reduce the amount of emissions of greenhouse gases entering our atmosphere, 
the effects of climate change, global warming, and weather will ultimately be devastating to both people and our planet. Thank you so much for joining us, Swarmers. As always, stay safe, stay sustainable, and we will see you next time.